Today we are taking a look at a 2007 Epiphone SG G400. Um, so the SG, it stands for Solid Body Guitar. Uh, the reason it landed on the title SG, as you will see here, uh, indicative of our truss rod cover, um, they landed on SG because originally this was supposed to be called a Les Paul. Now, in the 60s, when they designed this model, um, some of them actually have Les Paul here on the tendon cover. Uh, the reason they did not go with the name Les Paul and they ended up sticking to the SG, uh, the SG moniker is because, well, a couple reasons. Number one, it is, uh, it's, there's two rumors. The first is that Les Paul did not like the new design. Um, he did not like the thin, uh, the thin body and wasn't happy with the tone. Um, probably more appropriate to the truth is the fact that uh, he was going through a divorce from Mary Ford and probably was not going to sign on with another deal with Gibson, which means uh, he didn't want to add anything else for the time being, which um, there's a, probably a little bit more truth to that because he ended up doing some, some branding with them later on back down the line. Um, but back to the SG, we have a typical uh, a double cutaway layout here with two single uh, two humbuckers. These are Alnico 5s from the Epiphone line. Um, they're very hot. Bridge pickup is incredibly hot. Uh, neck pickup is warm and buttery. We'll hear that in a minute in a tone demo. Um, and you have your traditional Les Paul layout for your controls. So you have two volumes and two tones. Uh, you have a three-way toggle switch. Um, instead of the Les Paul style of being up here, it's located back down here. We have the uh, 60s style partial pit guard and the tendon cover that runs along up front here. Uh, you have your Nashville style bridge, um, which means that it is post mounted into the body. Uh, very difficult to see here on the, the tail piece, but yes, there are posts under there as well. Um, just adds to a little bit of sturdiness into the, uh, into the design. Some people swear by the ABR, some people swear by Nashville, as to each his own. Um, you have the uh, traditional uh, fake, uh, not all the way open book headstock from uh, this era. So they were still chopping off up here. Um, and you have your crown, your Epiphone crown, which is fantastic. SG on the truss rod cover. Uh, rosewood fingerboard on this. This is a single slab mahogany body. Um, some pretty nice figuring in this one. This, uh, this particular model is in the Warren Cherry, uh, uh, the Warren Cherry color. Uh, and onto the back, you've got some Grover tuners on here, which we will get into the back. Uh, Grover tuners right here. Um, serial number on this one dictates it's an 07. Um, and you have your traditional, uh, let's see if we can get the scarf joint. Yep, scarf joint right there for Epiphones which is traditional on these guys. That way uh, they swear it makes the headstock a little bit less prone to breaks that way because it's a solid piece of wood up there as opposed to the Gibson way. Um, and uh, you have your uh, strap button here located. Uh, this is a neck through guitar, so it's not bolt on. Um, and strap button located in the back here and your uh, uh, control plate cover. Nice figuring in the neck, too. Uh, it's kind of cool. So this guitar is a worn cherry finish, um, but it's been lovingly, very, very lovingly well taken care of, with the exception of a few spots, which we'll go over in just a second. Um, and the neck has been played so much, it's actually got a little bit of a semi-gloss finish to it, from uh, which can happen to all of this. If you buff it up enough, it's going to shine. This is literally just from a person's hand sliding up and down this neck over and over again has given it that kind of slight shiny sheen to it, which is pretty cool. This guitar has definitely been uh, well taken care of for being such a well-played model. Um, this is one of the only areas that there is some, uh, some damage on the headstock here. Uh, there's a slight chip there in the corner, and I'm not sure what this is, but it appears to me, if I, if I had to take a guess, I would say somebody had something on their fingers, some type of a a substance and they were uh, doing something, maybe trying to clean the guitar with something they weren't sure what it was. And there's, cause it's actually, it looks like fingerprints. If you look at it in the right light, it literally looks like someone's fingerprints are like permanently uh, uh, kind of 
stained into into the finish there. Uh, which, being that it's a satin finish anyway, it's going to show. Um, there's some nice nice figuring on the neck here on the rosewood fingerboard. And, of course, we've got our perloid trapezoid inlays, which look really fantastic on this model. Pickup covers uh, exhibit a little bit of wear, but nothing too crazy. Still very, very shiny, very, very polishy. Uh, same thing with the uh, bridge and tailpiece. Um, definitely a lot of pick, pick marks on the pick guard, which is okay. That's what it's for. Uh, poker chip looks vintage and kind of worn in with that slightly aged kind of gold uh, look to it. And then we have our uh, traditional witch hat style knobs, which I love. These are some of my favorites. Um, and uh, this is, so this is what is in, makes it indicative of an SG400. Um, the G400, you, you get your, uh, you get binding along your neck. Uh, you get the trapezoid inlays and uh, you get the smaller pick guard with the traditional 10 and 60s tenon cover. Um, you also get the witch hat style knobs um, from the, from the 60s, from the original line, which is pretty freaking cool with our handy dandy neck relief measurement tool. And you see right there around the 12th there is action. We're gonna use our Fritz ruler at the 12th. We check string six and we are right under spec and down to string one. Also right under spec. Well, great playing guitar, awesome playing instrument. Uh, let's go ahead and get some pickup readings. So, neck pickup on this guy, reading in about 8.26. Um, that's in the rhythm position. Uh, we'll go ahead and switch it over to the bridge. Bridge reading super hot, 13.49. Uh, 0 0.48, 49, 48, 49, 48, 49. And in the middle, we're going to go ahead and probably get somewhere in between there. And right about 5.12, yeah. That about splits the difference. Um, even though this bridge pickup is super hot, it sounds really, really nice, uh, which you'll hear from the plane demo. Um, and on to get it boxed up to her new forever home, which very happy to send her off to New York. Uh, I hope he's very, very happy with it. This is an awesome guitar.